No spoilers, but this had me in tears multiple times. I cried more than once. It's a massive achievement for the MCU. It's a comic book epic, a space opera, and a fitting send-off for this team and James Gunn from Marvel. Now that I have your attention with my new set, smash that like button, ring the bell to be notified of any time I upload new videos. Thanks. Now let's get into it. I think, understandably, everyone was a bit concerned about this one for a while. It's been six years since Volume 2. And of course, the Guardians have had multiple appearances in two Avengers films, a Thor movie, their own holiday special, plus side animated series, and multiple video games. Maybe a bit of an oversaturation for the Guardians of the Galaxy. So James Gunn being fired and hired by DC and rehired by Marvel and now being the boss of DC certainly made everyone even more curious, at the very least, how this swan song for all of these characters and his time of Marvel would end up. But he absolutely nailed it. Watch out. It surpasses the second film completely, and nearly completely matches the first film in every way. It isn't quite as maybe refreshingly original as the first one, but the emotional and mature complexity elevates it beyond most of its peers in the MCU, putting it right up there. In fact, this feels like a final jumping off point for those that want an ending and needed more closure after Endgame. I'm certain, and it's all but confirmed, we'll see the Guardians again in some way, shape, or form. But as far as this team goes with many of its characters, they get the send-off that most franchises don't. They're treated with a loving care, a dignified respect, and an earnest appreciation at the journey to get here. It's bittersweet to say the least, and in moving all of the time, while being the usual, delightfully weird. Can I also just mention that the humor and levity are balanced oh so well, and the visual effects, for once in Marvel, are perfect. Marvel really let this one cook, and let me say it's about dang time. Rocket is the heart of this one, in a way that you won't expect. If you've seen the Book of Boba Fett, you'll feel some similarities there that other reviews have mentioned. His backstory can be hard to watch because it's insanely tragic, but it makes it all the more compelling and fulfilling by the end. What a character arc though, man. I'll be honest, I was hoping for more of Drax's backstory in these, but I suppose I do see that with him, what you see is what you get. And what you get here recontextualizes everything about Drax in the best way and it's just sweet. Mantis comes into her own as a character here, growing into the fiery soul of the team, quick to defend her family but also to call them out. Lovable through it all. Mr. Star-Lord, Peter Quill, does his usual stick, but to greater effect and with more weariness than ever before. And some humorous callbacks to the events of Infinity War, and your heart breaks for him as he chases the woman he loves, who isn't the woman he loves. How that all comes together is tough, but appropriate. Very real, and this version of Gamora makes that better in every way. She challenges the viewer's perception in every sense, but in a way, finding herself in this new world too, which I didn't see coming. Groot is Groot. There's some really cool hints at uh, his power and how that power is growing, he's great. And there is this tiny subplot in here with him, specifically, with an even smaller payoff at the end that I didn't initially cast, but my wife pointed it out to me and it was awesome. So pay attention to Groot in this movie. Nebula probably surprised me the most with her character arc trajectory from the original to this one, being one of such redemption and healing. Which brought me to tears that she had me smiling nonstop. She carries a lot more of this than expected, and Karen Gillan, I believe that's how you pronounce her name, could be Gillian, nails the role. Just, wow. What growth for all of these characters. It's just Blows me away how good the writing is. The High Evolutionary is really well executed, well acted, and even has a more unique worldview than most MC villains. But goal wise, it does feel a bit samey in the grand scheme of things. And while I recognize the film is 150 minutes already, I could have gone with even more history on his interactions with the greater universe. But we get so much of what his motives are and the licks he'll go for them based on Rocket's backstory. It was a smart and clever way to build up the villain. Uh, from MC's usual issues with that department. I suspect there will be more from all of that part of the story eventually. He's one of the better villains, for sure. Maybe mid-tier. The one portion I am most torn on is the use of Adam Warlock. Without Thanos, and without the Soul Stone, if you know anything about the comics, who is this character? Because I feel like the MCU missed the boat on where he was really needed as a character with those two things from the comics. So he's kind of just here as a plot device a lot of the time. I'm not sure if his role changed from the original script, even how delayed this one was post-Infinity Saga, but it's sad we'll never probably get his actual arc from the comics and what his purpose is. Yet it was smart to make it an origin story and using him as a minor villain given his power and his, his innocence is used to horrifying effect. 
and it culminates in a believable ending of future for him. He's played a bit too comedic at times, but he's also terrifying when needed. All in all, Will Poulter does well with his material, and I believe he could have a bright future. Even if he's the one element feels a smidge undercoat or out of place, and again, it's sad he's not able to be what he was originally created for from the comics for the movies. So in that sense, he's executed well. I see why they had to do it the way they did. And they take him from a place of literally not belonging to, well, belonging. He just so ever skirts that line of a serious character becoming a quippy machine that the MCU is infamous for at this point. But James Gunn knows restraint more than most. But that one shot near the end, if y'all saw it, way too on the nose. Come on, y'all. That was... I, I rolled my eyes. Literally out loud went... Really? There's been a lot about this is the MCU's first F-bomb being used here. And where it's used, I kind of was like, really? That, that's where I used, you were going to use it? I did laugh, but like, I feel like story-wise, there was a more appropriate place for it, for sure. You'll often hear me talk about consequences in film and how much that means to me, how important that is. And there's different types, of course. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 teases a lot of consequences and it carries them in metric butt-ton loads However, not the way we expect. There is loss of life for sure, but most of them are more emotional in nature, and I appreciate that this turns to a mostly happy ending. It's not done for shock value. Even though as bittersweet as it is, it still leaves you with that sense of that sense of longing, that sense of hurt. It reminds me of Return of the King or Endgame in that way. And I don't always agree with James Gunn's approach to things, but he largely nails everything he does. He once described himself as being a writer first, and basically stated how a lot of films don't get the script right before moving into production. From what I understand, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 needed no reshoots. His script was complete and honestly, pretty much perfect. And now, we have the best Marvel Cinematic Universe trilogy yet. I give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 5 out of 5 stars. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, always look for the good.